Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We're back with another episode of Road to the PGA Championship with Thomas Campbell. Thomas, it's been a while since we checked in. Uh, I think it was just after the National uh, PGA Professional Championship that we checked in. I know you were kind of pleased how you hit the ball in that tournament, but not quite the putting and eventually your score wasn't quite what you wanted. So, but you mentioned you had a full kind of summer schedule of events. And so we wanted to check in here. It's towards the, it's actually the very beginning of August right now. So I'm sure you've been busy, you've been competing a lot. So kind of give us an update on maybe some recent events, how things are going and, and everything. Yeah, so I believe I've like turned a corner here. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, the, the National Club Pro Championship for me, I uh, didn't have the best preparation coming out of, coming out of Minnesota. Yeah. First, first event of the year and I hadn't played mm -hmm. an event for five months. Right. So that's always going to be a, a challenge. Luckily, next year's event is a couple weeks later. Okay. Uh, I'm giving myself an opportunity to at least get maybe hit off grass because we had a yeah. really rough, rough, rough spring up here in Minnesota. Yeah. However, now the, the weather's been great. We've yeah. had some awesome, nice hot weather in Minnesota. I've had the opportunity to play in a, a decent amount of events, um, section events, pro-ams. Yeah. 3M Open Qualifier, and I've yeah. got the Canadian Qualifier, and then also our local um, section championship coming up very soon. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned the 3M Qualifier. Um, I know you kind of you. I remember that that day happening, and we were kind of following you. I remember at the office and everything, and uh, you got off to a pretty good start, and you made some birdies. Um, I think it was just shy of the qualifying number, maybe a couple shots there, but. That's always one of those where you kind of really have to get hot to get to that number. Yeah, I shot 67 out there. 64 was in a playoff okay. to get it to get in, and I I knew 63, 64. You have to shoot yeah. out there, and it's kind of interesting because Victory Links is rated pretty you know pretty highly with regards to the the course rating. Right. I think it's like 75 or 76 from the tees, but the scores are always very yeah. very good there. Everyone knows how to putt. Everyone knows you just don't hit shots offline. Right. And that was the biggest difference is you know I shot 67. It was one of the easiest 67s I had shot. The only difference was about five or six shots when I had either a wedge in my hand or a shorter iron. I pulled it by 30 feet or pushed it by 30 feet. Yeah. Instead of having a close close putt to make birdie, I left myself a 30 footer and yeah. ended up two putting those. So yeah, it was it was a it was a good round. It was kind of a good confidence builder. I had my coach back on the bag caddying for me and hadn't, hadn't caddied for me for a while. So it was, that was that was fun. And I would say I actually you know really enjoyed playing yeah like it, it was it was fun playing you know i played with a couple of guys that you know, all, all they do is chase monday qualifiers all yeah. year you know they have uh corn Ferry tour status and, sure um so it was fun to be competing against those guys again and i miss it i really yeah. do i, I yeah. it, it reminds me of how much i, I kind of miss that and I, don't, I mean it's a grind but just playing it at a, a high quality level yeah i'm sure it's a different yeah. level of competition when you kind of have your almost livelihood in a way we've had an episode of the series actually, we, we talked about that and kind of the experience of where your livelihood is almost on the line every time you go tee it up. And so that's what those guys are still doing. But uh, you mentioned kind of turning a corner and I know now yeah, maybe the, the summer didn't quite get to the you know the hottest start for you. I know you were kind of disappointed right away, but I think now you got a couple wins under your belt in terms of the Minnesota PGA section. So talk about those and now kind of building that momentum for the rest of the year. Yeah, so it's, it's funny, you know, talking about needing a 63 or 64 at, at victory lengths. Well, Four days later, Fairbolt uh, Pro Am, I go out and shoot 62. 10 under. <laughs> um, it was a really f interesting round. Um, I only hit one fairway, <laughs> 11 greens, and 20 putts. That, we have to look into the golf history books, <laughs> but hitting one fairway and shooting 10 under, that can't be a very common feat. Uh, that has to be maybe a handful of times ever. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, and I had uh, hit one shot left-handed about 100 yards too. Really? There. Yeah, because my ball was stuck up against a tree. So it was <laughs> a it was a real grind. I finished with 15 one putts in a row. So one putt of the first, two putt of the second, two putt of the third. Actually, I could have made those two putts, but ended up being right on the edge. Right. And then I had 15 one putts to finish with. And I only <laughs> made one putt over 10 feet. So everything was styled in. All your wedges must have been... Yeah. All, all money. Yeah, wedges so. were close, or if I was uh, missed the green, I, don't know, oh, I missed seven okay, greens. Down, I yeah. chipped it. You know, I made everything within ten feet. Yeah, but, um, yeah. It was. I mean, I didn't have many opportunities to make more more than right. over over ten feet in length. <laughs> right, right. So that so, win, I'm sure, helped with your ranking to Minnesota PGA section. So tell us where you're at there, and then I think remind the viewers too, kind of of what's on the line there. You know, let's say you do rank, you know, number one in those point standings at the end of the year per se. Like, what do you get for that? 
Yeah, that particular event, I mean, uh, that's money list. And yeah. I'm, I'm in third in the money list this year. I, was, I ended up first last year. Um, and then player of the year, it doesn't count towards points, but we have a certain section events that do count towards points. I'm actually okay. third in the player of the year f for that. Okay. Um, the winner of the player year of the year gets in a spot in the 3M Open. Okay. Um, last year, because I wasn't Class A until August, I didn't have the opportunity to win it, even though my points were, were higher. But okay. um, this year, I'm in a good spot. I didn't play great in the first couple events that count towards the points. Okay. But I'm still in the Minnesota PJ match play. And the round of eight left in that. Um, we've got uh, a, a section championship coming up, and I have Minnesota Golf Champions and another event. So I've got some points play, you know, st events coming up very very soon, which are going to give me an opportunity to chase down the leaders okay. in the in the points there. Um, and then you know, I, I'm feeling good about the game. I feel like I've definitely turned a corner. A lot of it, you know, definitely comes down to this. Yeah. Um, I mean, driving too. I mean, I'm only hitting one fairway. That was kind of a freak round, the fact that I only hit one <laughs> yeah. fairway. It's very tight out there. Um, and I was hitting driver on every hole. I was feeling good. Yeah. And I just happened to either pull it. I'm sure a lot of them yards, too are still yeah. in play or just maybe a few, a few yards off the fairway or yeah. whatever it might yeah. be. So. Yeah, they were, they were playable at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, is, this has been my, my change up, I guess, for the, for the year. And I went through a couple of different putters. Yeah. I started the year with a standard putter. No arm lock. Then I went back to an arm lock putter that was a more a larger mallet style. Yeah. It was like the two ball. Yep. Um, with the, with the lines on it, and then you know I was you know talking to someone that you know mentioned hey when you're putting your best you're putting with a putter that you know had a little bit more of that that blade style look yeah. to it, and that was originally I think that was the Badenardi Studio stock. I can't remember the exact number. I, I want to say it was 28. I know it might be 28. That, that head yep. shape where it's kind of a thicker blade almost like yep. a wide blade. A little thicker blade. So I happened to. Go to, I actually happened to look on our website to try and find a Odyssey Potter here um, that had very, very similar style to yeah. that. Happened to find one at our Minneapolis location online. Okay. Lucky I live in the, in the cities and I called them and said, hey, I need I need this particular Potter. Yep. Um, end up going and getting a, a grip, putting a grip on it because we had to cut it down. It was 43 inches. Okay. Um, so I cut it down, put a new grip on it. And now we're at 39 inches arm lock Potter. And, it's just it gives me a visual and comfort that I'm I'm used to seeing looking, looking yeah. down down at and I'm like putting I mean look at like Will Zelatoris for example I mm -hmm. mean he is a great ball striker putting's is not his strength you know I wouldn't say putting is not my strength I just don't have the opportunity to, to practice and grind all year yeah. long like these guys do um, so it just makes it easier for me to you know, work up walk up and do a limited practice that I do yeah with the sure sure well. So you, t you mentioned some of these events before, but to kind of remind everybody again as we kind of wrap up the events that you got coming up, what's most important here. I know you mentioned the like PJ Tour Canada qualifier. You mentioned also the Minnesota Section Championship. Uh, so talk about those and uh, when those are, and then we'll kind of check back in maybe towards the end of the end of yeah. the summer. So I actually have two opportunities to qualify for the PGA Tour Canada event at Craigens. Yep. Um, it's first PJ Tour Canada event outside of Canada. So um, it's nice as in Brainerd, Minnesota. So it's about two hours north of where, where I live. So it's a great opportunity to play in one of those. Um, we have our section qualifier. So the top 25 guys on the section points um, for that on uh, we'll, next week, we'll play in a qualifier. The okay. person that finished first um, will get a spot in there. And then there's also the traditional Monday qualifier, which is a couple weeks later. Okay. Um, that will also be up in, up in Brainerd there too, where they give out, I think eight, eight spots to get in the, the field there too. So. I got a couple of qualifiers coming up for that. It'd be, be nice to play in another Canadian event. I had yeah. Monday for, qualified before for any Canadian event. Okay. Um, end up making the cut there too. So I would love to qualify and have a really good finish up there as my game is starting to you know, feel like it's turning around. Yep. Um, and then we, we have our section championship. And that is that is pretty much, um, and that's the major for us. Yep. Um, main goal as we started this series was to qualify for the for the National Club Pro to have an opportunity to qualify for the PJ Championship. Yep. So step one here again has got to finish in the top eight yep. in the section championship. Also player of the year points for me is very, very important. So both of those two, yeah. um, that you know, very, very important events, but I said that that's my major and that's the end of August. Okay. Uh, I just got moved to Minnewaska uh, Golf Club up in Glenwood, Minnesota. Um, so I'm looking forward to those two events and yeah, I've, I've got some time here to put a little bit more time into the game outside of all, all the yeah. work that I'm kind of doing here. But it's uh, it's starting to turn around. I'm feeling really good about it. I've spent a lot of time on this green when right. I have had a chance um, to work on the putting. And I've been doing some 
some speed drills. I've been doing some some confidence T drills around the, around the clock, and and it's really starting to turn a corner for putting for me. And I get dangerous when I start holding oh, yeah. a lot of those six I've to seen ten it. footers. I've seen it yeah. happen before, so I know. We're all rooting for you, and we've been kind of following along this summer, I know, and uh, I think we're excited to see what's coming, especially now that you're kind of heating up, getting some lower scores out there. So, uh, Thomas, thanks for sitting down and chatting today, and uh, we'll let you get back to the grind a little bit. But uh, viewers, make sure you're following Thomas's scores and go on the Minnesota PJ section website and follow along on the leaderboards and everything. But otherwise, we'll check back in here in a few weeks and see how things are going.